everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Hanna Ruana. This is an easy project and it can fit anybody, any size. You can use any yarn and any hook. So it is very adjustable to how you would like it to fit on you. And uh, you don't have to go out and buy yarn if you don't want to, and you can just use what you have on hand. So let's get started. I will let you know the materials that you'll need. Um, for what I used and then um, how it is constructed and how to measure yourself. This project was discontinued. Uh, she no longer sells this yarn. It is Be So Baby by Kristen Omdahl. This was a lightweight three. It was 142 yards per ball. I used a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, I used 11 of these. I kept all the ball bands. So I counted 11. Now, if I used all 11 on this, I'm not 100% positive. I'm sure I used 10. Um, I may have partial a partial ball somewhere around here, but that don't don't get worried about that. That's like 1,600 yards of yarn, but that is because I made mine very very large. So the way it is constructed, it will start. Um, you will measure yourself how far you want it down on your body and that is going to like the front of your waist area all the way around your shoulder to the back um, where you want to hit it if you want to hit like on your lower back or to cover your bum. However far you want it to measure, you measure that length on you with a tape measure and then you chain as many as you need to make it that long. So whatever yarn you choose um, with whatever hook you would like, then you would just go ahead and proceed with that. So the, uh, the actual pattern, stitch pattern here, this is the decorative part. So that, that needs to be in multiples of um, four plus three. So you would just chain in multiples of four once you get your measurement you want, add three to the end of that measurement. So we are going to be making two of the panels. So you want to write down your measurement or put it in your phone or wherever so that you have it for the next one. Cause I will tell you, I thought I had the right measurement <laughs> when I was doing my second panel. However, I was wrong and I messed up, but I, I didn't fret about it. I just, I just rolled with it and I'll show you what I did. So that's the beginning of it. We need to get the measurement from how long you want it on the front of your body, all the way up over your shoulder to the back of your body in multiples of four, and then chain three extra at the end. Once you get your multiples of four, that's the beginning. So you're going to need two panels and that's it. That's all we need for this project. The yarn I will be showing you in is true boo that is still available. This is Rayon from Bamboo. It is awesome yarn. I love it. It does split a bit. So if you hate this kind of yarn, don't use it. Like I said, you can use any yarn, any hook you want. If you choose a yarn and whatever hook, just know that if you choose a hook that is larger than your recommended size, you will get a more of a lacy, airy Ruana. So this one calls for a 4mm, a G. I'm going to use a 4.5 because I used 4.5 on this one. And I like the airiness to it because it's summer. So this has 241 yards. So if we are going by what I have used in this one to make mine. So mine could actually fit anybody. Um, I'll show you in, in the pictures how, how far it hits down on me. It actually fits down to the end of my arms. So it's almost, it's, it's pretty much like a sleeved cardigan type, um, garment. So you can choose how many pattern repeats you want to do on yours. And it can be as small as a vest. Type Ruana, or it can go down on your arms to your upper arm to your to your elbow to further down like I made mine. 
Um, it's, it's very, very adjustable. Uh, and quite frankly, I made mine much larger than I thought I needed it. <laughs> but hey, you'll live and you learn, right? So um, as far as yardage goes, if you were to make something comparable like the size that I made, which I will give you measurements, So mine was about 1,600 yards of yarn. If you are going to go the true boo route, you're going to have to buy enough enough to do. So you, you're going to have to buy about, mm, you know, six, seven of these balls because they're 241 yards. I, like I said, I used 10 to 11 of the Be So Baby. Now, just a side note, if you are going to do a tighter, uh, a closer crochet, not so lacy like this. So if you're going to use um, a smaller hook size or a size that is uh, comparable to what you should be using with your yarn, you're probably going to have to adjust your yardage. So it's very depending upon how loose you crochet, how tight you crochet, what hook you use, what yarn you use. It's very, very adjustable. So the size that I made, I'm actually like, if, if I measured myself a true size, I'm probably a 2X. I made this, this could actually, gosh, I, I can't even tell you. Um, if, if, depending on how you wanted to wear it, the size that I made could fit probably a 6x. I mean, it is, it's a very sizable garment. Um, this yarn too, as well as Trubu, has this wonderful drape to it. So it doesn't, it's not like wearing a blanket. It actually goes around and, and hugs you in all the right areas because it, it lays nice. It has nice drape. So that is another reason why I chose uh, a little larger hook with the yarn um, because it does help with the drape. It also helps with the airiness of it. So, um, so yeah, if you if you're looking to make a larger garment, just keep that in mind. Um, I'll show you where I'm, you know, quote messed up on mine. So one of my panels, like I said, I I sized incorrectly. I thought I chained. Oh gosh, I think, you know, it's in my phone, so I can't look. But I I chained the wrong amount for my second panel because I thought I was smart enough to remember. I wasn't so I ended up with two panels one panel was shorter than the other okay so I mean if you wanna if you want to do that that's you know that's a choice <laughs> but what I did was I just took the the side that had the longer portion to it and then I decided to go ahead and add to that panel so you'll see here where I have the actual panel that I made and it, you know, it, you work like this. So I ended up having to add these repeats to the bottom so that it matched in length. And it actually, I, I like it. It looks like a design element. It looks like I meant to do it. So I'm just between you and me. Um, I meant to do it. <laughs> so in the front, this would be my front seam by my stomach Th this shows a sideway pattern but if you don't crochet you you may not notice you may notice and think that it was on purpose so if you end up not having two identical panels which is what I did you would just go ahead and by that time you'll already have this repeat down it will be no big deal to to add on a piece to your garment so let me go ahead and measure this. Um, I'm gonna measure side to side and top to bottom. Now that's adjustable to a however you want to make yours. Like I said, we start with your chain 
and that is going to be your measurement on the front of your body around your waist area or lower if you'd like. If you wanted to make this a bikini cover-up, you could even go longer if you want. You could go down to your knees if you want, whatever measurement you, however long you want it, however short you want it. You take that measurement on the front of your body, go all the way up to your shoulder, and then measure down the back of your body. How far you want it to be. So that will be our starting chain. You need multiples of four plus three. So multiples of four, whatever, whatever number you have at the end has to be divisible by four, and then you will chain three. Once you are done creating your two panels, all I did was I sewed up the front until I had, you know, I sewed up the front until I would have a V-neck hit on me, like a V-neck t-shirt. And then I stopped sewing and then I continued in back where I wanted it to be in back. So it's a wide V-neck and you would just sew up the bottom to the middle where your neckline would be. And then in the back, you would have a V-neck in back or you could close it all the way up. It's up to you. I wanted an open uh, V-neck in back as well. And then the sides, uh, you could sew up. I sewed mine up because I want mine permanently closed, but you could do a corset tie and I can show you how to do that. Um, you could just do um, just a weave in and out tie and then pull it out whenever you wanted to. Um, you could also clip it if you didn't want to permanently put anything there. You can go around the entire garment in single crochet if you want. I did not do that. I did not think the edges uh, warranted that to be done. I'll show you them. They look perfectly fine to me. So this is the edge that would be like the side of the sleeve area. So I thought it looked finished enough. Um, didn't think it needed anything extra. So we have our measurement now in multiples of four, and we are going to chain that amount with whatever yarn you want and whatever hook you like. I am going to use Trubu and a 4.5 mm hook. Okay, have the yarn ready after the yarn barf. I am going to create a sample for this since I've already made my Ruana. I'm going to do a multiple of uh, four, so I'm going to chain 16. And then at the end of your multiples of four, you will add three, so chain three. So row one, we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. This yarn is so nice and soft. And then we are going to double crochet in each chain across.
this repeat, so the, in the beginning, you can choose how many repeats you want to do. And then the decorative middle portion that I pointed out at the beginning, um, that, it, that can hit anywhere you would like it hit on your body. What I did was I did this repeat all for my arms. Um, and then once I got over to my shoulder area is where I did the decorative part. That's up to you. You do however you want to do it. Um, you just know that you can repeat the first uh, few rows here uh, several times if you want to make this larger. And that was, that was what I was getting to at the beginning of the video. So for row two, we're going to chain four. And that is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. We're going to skip the first two double crochets. So one, two, we're counting this. One, two, we're skipping those two. And we're going to put a double crochet in this one. My yarn is getting caught up on me. Then we are going to chain one and we're going to skip one. We're going to put a double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to do that all the way across. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Make sure you put a double crochet in your last so that is our row two right there Got row one and row two next row is row three we're going to chain three And we're going to put a double crochet in this first chain one space. We're going to put a double crochet in the double crochet from the previous row. We're going to put a double crochet in the next chain one. And we are going to do this all the way across. Double crochet in the top of the last row's double crochet double crochet in the chain one space from last row all the way across Now remember at the end here, this was a chain four at our other row. We need to do a double crochet in that. We also need to do a double crochet in the top of the, that would be the top of the chain three. So the fourth one was our chain one. We need that double crochet and we need a double crochet in the top of that chain three space. So let's take a look here. This is a repeat. This section you can repeat as many times as you want. If you wanted to make your entire panel out of this repeat, you could and then be done and do a second panel and not do the the insert part um, that I showed you. I don't know if I can bring this over here without making a mess. Let me scoot this over here. So what we are calling the fancy part is a section here 
right here. This would be the fancy part. This is the part you just did right here. This would be your row one, row two, row three. Okay. If you want to do your entire Ruana like that, you sure can. Uh, what I did, I'll count my repeats here. When I started my first panel, I did a lot of repeats because I wanted this oversized and boy, did I get it that way. All right, so I have, here's my starting. So that is one, two, get lost here. One repeat, two, three, four, five. Looks like I did six repeats before the fancy portion. So that is up to you. It, this is just how you can adjust it to fit you. It is, it is up to you, 100% up to you. I don't have enough room on this table. Okay, kind of can get in there. See the fancy parts over here? Okay, get some dog hair on it. Um, you choose how many repeats you want. So on mine, all of these, these are going down my arm because that's how, that's how wide I had made this. So all of these are going down my arm. And then we get into the, the fancier stitch. So it's up to you. You can repeat it as many times as you want. So we would have row one, row two, row three. Let's go from there. So let's say I want to do another repeat. I'll show you what we do. So since this is one repeat, and I'm just going to guess that you're going to want more than one repeat. Our next row, we would be doing uh, the open mesh. So we do a chain four. One, two, three, four. Is that three, four? Or did I mess up? I messed up. That is so wobbly. Doing that over. One, two, three, four. Better. Turn. And then we are going to skip this stitch, skip this stitch, and we are going to put a double crochet in this stitch. See that? And we're gonna chain one. I'm getting hooked up on my items over here. There's water in my other hooks. Sorry. Okay. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet all the way down your row. And this gets very, with, you know, you get, you can get into a rhythm with this and really enjoy working this up. I considered not doing the fancier stitch, but quite honestly, I think it is beautiful. If you have it hit right about center of your your shoulder area very beautiful then you see that stitching all the way down the front okay so that would be the starting of a next repeat so then your next row your next row would be this yarn is so tied up, I'm sorry. It keeps tangling on itself. Okay, so your next row would be chain three, turn. Then we would do a double crochet in your chain one space. Double crochet, top of your double crochet. So easy, so easy to do this and adjust it to be your size. You just would need to do that repeat over and over and over. If you wanted to keep doing it for the whole thing, you sure could. So nice. And one of the things that I thought about doing, if I did a shorter version than what I had made, because mine's pretty darn long, 
I think it would be really cute to do a huge long chain of say a variegated yarn that matches whatever yarn you're making your Ruana and weave it in and out of this mesh. That would be so adorable. Kind of boho and I don't know, is hippie a thing anymore? <laughs> So then if you wanted to keep repeating, you would do the chain four. You would skip the stitch that you're in and the stitch, double crochet right here. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. All the way across. That could also be a solution too. If you ended up making a panel and you thought it was too open of a weave, you could do that. You could chain up even the same yarn. You could chain up a long chain and weave it in and out of these mesh stitches. I don't know if I'm making sense when I say that. So if you ended up with too large of holes and you didn't want to rip out your project, but you thought it was leaving too many gaps. You could go ahead and chain up a whole bunch of long chains that would match what you're doing. Match um, in length, sorry, I'm just rambling. Take a little length of yarn here from the other end of the ball. Pretend like mine is done and I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify it. Um, with this idea just to just to show you what I'm talking about. This is me 24-7. I'm always thinking of something different to do. Okay, so pretend this is an entire project done. So if you didn't like the mesh, you could just take this, weave it in and out, close that mesh in, and you're gonna end up with a warmer garment and if you had this a different color wouldn't that be kind of cool i think that'd be pretty cool especially for a fun vibe like if you're making this for a young girl and you wanted to use like some of them funky yarns that i always feel are too bright for me or too crazy for me see how that closes up the gap if this was a different color, that would look pretty cool. Okay, enough of that. So once you decide that you are done doing your repeats, you wanna make sure that you end on a row that you are doing the chain three. This would be the row you wanna end on. You wanna end on the row where you're doing the chain three, double crochet in your chain one space, double crochet at the top of the last double crochet and so on. You want to make sure that you're ending on that kind of row so that you could get the fancy stitches in. They're not really fancy, but they're more fancy than this. So that's why I'm calling them fancy, just to uh, disting distinguish between the two. This yarn is so nice, other than it occasionally splitting, which I'm okay with because for every other reason I love this yarn, um, it is it is quite nice. One of my favorite yarns, I have to admit. Uh, Michaels has a version that they make of this called Capri, and it is quite nice as well have nothing bad to say about that either. It's a tad bit thinner though, uh, weight wise. Okay, so you want to end on a row like this. So, you know, technically you're looking at ending on, if, if you're counting from the beginning, it would be your row three. You want to end on one of those rows. Okay. 
Now we'll do the quote fancy stitches. So this would be um, I mean it depends on how many repeats you did. I can't even call this a row <laughs> because I don't know what you're ending on. For me it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be row eight for me, but it's totally depending on where you stopped on your rows. It doesn't really matter. You just need to do this row this way. Okay. So we're going to chain two and skip the first two double crochet. Well, we want to turn our work. Okay. So we chained two. We're going to skip two double crochet, one, two, and double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to chain three right there where we are at the top of that double crochet. And then we are going to put three double crochet around this double crochet we just made. One, two, We're going to do that again. We are going to skip three double crochet. One, two, three. We're going to put a double crochet in the next stitch. We're going to chain three. And we're going to put three double crochet around that double crochet we just made. Like it's a post stitch, we'll say. But we're just really putting the stitches in that instead of other stitches. So one. Two. three. And sorry if I'm holding this weird or crocheting a little bit weird because I have to hold it a certain way uh, to be in the camera's view. Okay, so we're going to skip three more double crochets. One, two, three, and double crochet in the next stitch. Chain three. and put three double crochets on this double crochet we just created. One, two, three. I have a knot I have to work out here. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat, keep repeating that until we get to the last two stitches. So we're gonna count one, two, three, double crochet in this stitch, chain three, three double crochets around that double crochet we just made. One, two, whoops. Okay, we have two stitches left. We are going to skip this next double crochet and double crochet in the top of the chain three. I always go through two loops because I don't like it when it pulls and gets wonky on one. See if you look here, it's, I don't know, it just gets wonky looking. And it doesn't really matter. Like if you, if, if you know, you know, but if I was to just put it in one of the chains, it feels so wobbly to me. I don't know. It's just me, I think, but I always just grab two loops, whether it is in a chain or not. I mean, it, it has never made a difference. The career of my crocheting life. Okay. So that would be the first row of our fancy stitches. 
Not hard at all, very easy. So we're gonna move on to the next row. The next row we're gonna chain four and that counts as a treble crochet. And don't be afraid of treble crochet, it's just a longer stitch. So chain four, turn your work. I'm gonna walk you through this a bit. It's not hard, it's just you have to get used to it. We are going to skip these first double crochets and we are going to put a double crochet in the turning chain of our chain three that we made in our previous row. So way at the end here. I'm gonna skip these and put a double crochet right here. And we're gonna chain three. And now we're gonna put three double crochet in that double crochet. One, two, three. See how that kind of uh, balances us out and gets us a little fancy on the other side? We're going to repeat that all the way across this row. So from right here, we're going to do a double crochet in the top of this first chain three that we did from the previous row. Then we're going to chain three and put three double crochet on the post of that double crochet. We're going to keep doing that. Got one more to go. And then to finish that row off, we are going to do a treble crochet. So we wrap twice. And remember on this row way down here, we chained two at the beginning. We're gonna put our treble crochet right there. Now we have a finished row. See how it matches on both ends? It's pretty cool. So what I did in my pattern, I, I did my repeats like I told you. I did the fancy stitches and then I added more repeat and then I did another row of fancy stitches. You can choose however you want to do it. I did, I think only did one repeat in between feel like that's what my brain says and yes I did a one uh, one repeat of those repeat rows in between oh gosh that is real hard to see get that out of the way get up here okay so you see fancy repeat fancy you can do however you want. If you want to do, like I said, just do all the repeats like this, you sure can. If you want to throw in a fancy, um, two rows that are the fancy stitches, you can. And then finish out with repeats. It's completely up to you. I would just advise that however many repeats you do from your beginning edge, you want to repeat after your fancy stitches um, 
on the other side so that it's you know symmetrical so once you once you decide that you yeah, i mean you can go from there and do however so once you get your fancy rows done this is what you're going to look like then you need to continue on so that you can finish out the other side right we're going to go from there so after your fancy rows we're going to untangle our yarn again We need to do set up rows for the repeat. Set up row. So we're gonna do, um, this row will be different than our repeats so that we can get back into the repeats. So you're gonna wanna chain four. And that's gonna count as a double crochet chain one. You're going to skip the next four double crochet and that would be these that whole section here and you're gonna single crochet in the chain three loop so single crochet and then you're gonna chain three fiddly and then you're going to single crochet in the top of your chain three there chain three single crochet chain three single crochet Okay, so once you get to the end, you need to finish off this row. So at the beginning of this row, remember I said we had a chain four and that counts as a double crochet chain one. So now we need to finish with a double crochet chain one. So now we need to finish with a double crochet chain one by chaining one and putting a double crochet in the top of our previous row. And that makes that row match on the beginning and the end of it. Now to get back into the repeats, we are going to chain three. We're going to double crochet in the chain one space that we just made. We're going to double crochet in the single crochet we made previous row and we're going to put three double crochet in that chain three that we made in the previous row so three double crochets go right there double crochet in the single crochet three double crochets in the chain three space from the previous row Double crochet in the single crochet. Double crochet in the chain three space of the previous row. Double crochet in the single crochet. Ran out of yarn. Oh, and it tangled. By the way, if you do use True Boo, try not to pull hard on it. It will untangle fairly easy if you are patient with it because it is a fairly slippery, slippery yarn. You just have to be patient. Don't knot it though, because if you knot it, it makes it incredibly hard to undo. All right, so now we're gonna finish this row off 
I'm just un unraveling some yarn here. I'm going to finish this row off just by doing exactly what we did at the beginning by putting the double crochet in this chain one space and then double crochet at the top here of the chain three. And like I said, I always do two loops so that it's stronger. And I didn't do that. <laughs> Fell right out of it. Okay, so this should look familiar to you now. This row looks a lot like this row, right? So now, what do you think we're gonna do? Now, we're gonna do the one with the chain one spaces. So we're gonna chain four. You know this, one, two, three, four. This is such an easy pattern, guys. You can modify this as many times as you want and do this as many rows as you want. We're gonna skip this one, skip this one, double crochet in this one. So we're gonna, technically this isn't a stitch in my brain. And like when I'm crocheting, this isn't a stitch in my brain. I would be like, skip one, put a double crochet there. Just to be clear, a lot of people don't think like I think. We all think differently. So we want to do that exactly like I did it. Now we're gonna chain one, double crochet. After we skip one, chain one, skip one, double crochet and next. And this would be a repeat of our row two. Because no matter how many repeats you do, your one, two, and three will be the same. Don't forget to put one in the last. All right, see how that's coming together now? I'll put it sideways here. I love the color of this yarn. It's so gorgeous. This color is, I don't think I told you, blue. <laughs> that's pretty simple, blue. Okay, so now we're going to do what we would do on a row three, right? We're going to chain three. We're going to turn our work. We're going to put a double crochet in our chain one space. We're going to put a double crochet at the top of the last double crochet in the chain one space. And the top of the double crochet. Sorry, hit the camera. And so on. We're going to repeat that. Just like that. Okay, so on mine, what I did on mine was I did, right here I did um, another set of the fancy stitches. Okay, and then I resumed back and then I did repeats. And then that was one entire panel that I did. So you can make yours as wide as you want. You can do one set of fancy stitches. You can you can choose however you want to make your Ruana. You can make it totally your own. So I will work up um, a small a small swatch, and then I'll show you how to corset tie something. Um, if you want to do that, it's pretty cute. And then. Um, show you where to sew up where I sewed up on mine. You can sew yours up anywhere you'd like, but I'll show you where I sewed up mine. All right, so I have mine laid out on the kitchen table to show you that I did the front and the back just up until like a v-neck. And then on either side, I did the same thing. It's really hard to see. 
but let's see. Seam is right here. It's right here. And that is up to an armhole. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do a corset tie, although you're probably, you've done this probably and didn't call it a corset tie. You just called it tying it like a shoe. So I'm going to do it to, I'll do it to um, one of the V's and I'm going to do it to the back one because I found that the weight of um, my Ruana is pretty heavy since I made it so wide. And I think if I corset tied the back here, then I had the option, I'll have the option of taking that corset tie out if I want it to be open in the back or if I want it closed. So I'm using a contrasting color yarn just to show you so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to reverse this so that the camera can be set up so I can film without holding the camera. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have red yarn. This is Elite Baby. It has the uh, same type of feel as the Biso Baby. It is anti-pilling -pil acrylic though. And it is a nice yarns product. So I'm just going to chain. It does not matter. You just want to make sure that you have enough length to weave in and out um, just like a shoelace. Or if you're tying up a shoe, you will need more of a length than just just this much, you will need more of a length than that because you're going to go back and forth. So what am I at now? I am a little over that. And I will grab a needle so that this will be easier. like enough. I'm going to grab a needle and start putting this through. Okay, so I'm going to snip the end. Fasten that off. And if you, if you like the contrasting color, you can do it that way. Otherwise, you can use your same yarn to do that. So I'm just going to Thread this so that I can easily go through. Now, like I said, this is going to be a lot like tying a shoe. All right, so you would start wherever you want to join in. I just want to do the front so that I still have a place to put my head. So you would start wherever on the garment that will be your starting point, just like a shoelace, you know, in the crook of your shoe. At the front, you would start in a spot. On the other side, you would do the same. And I do not have two needles, so that wasn't very productive, but I'll use my crochet hook because that'll be fine. Okay, so if you're going to lace the shoe, you would just go back and forth. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this one out of the way. And I'm just going to go down a few, go into the side, go into this side. Go down a few, go on this side. Go down a few, go on this side. And it does not have to be perfect because, especially if you're doing the same color, it's going to be very hard to see what you have done. Okay, and then at the end, I am just going to let that lay. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to string it to this one. I'm going to attach it to the... All right, I'm going to do the other side. Starting down here, crisscross over this way. like tying a shoe. I'm 
This is something that I've been doing since I started crocheting a long, long time ago. 2005. Because sometimes you do not want a permanent closure on something. Okay, let me turn this around. Okay, so both sides are sewn up now. I am going to pull on the bottom at the same time like you would be tying a shoe and hold the top here. If that was the same color, that would get lost in there and you would not see it, okay? And then you would just, you know, do a loose tie at the bottom so it's easy to get out. You could leave it that way. You could put tassels on the ends of these. You could do a bow. You do what, whatever method of cuteness you want. You could do charms at the ends of these. That'd be really cute. Beads at the end would be adorable. But then that gives you that gives you more of a t-shirt than like a beach cover-up or a ruana because the back is completely closed and then you just have the v-neck in front. So that is how you would do a corset tie. And like I said, you can, you can um, sew up your ruana however you'd like. Uh, you don't even need to sew it up. You could do corset tie all the way if you'd like. You could start your corset tie at the bottom and then have it come up through here and then have the ties or tassels or you know the ends dangling here. That'd be cute. And then it'd be easy to loosen up as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I thoroughly love my Ruana very, very much. If you take you take a belt when you're wearing this right underneath of your arms and cinch it in. It is quite gorgeous. The effect is quite gorgeous. Uh, but also remember if you do use a yarn that has a lot of bamboo in it um, or the lighter weight cottons that they will have drape and it will be gorgeous on you. you you'll, it will hug your curves and it will be very complimentary to any, any size human. So um, I hope you enjoy making this Ruana and uh, go ahead and email me any pictures that you have if you wanna share. And my email is spiffyhandmade at gmail.com. And yeah, I would really enjoy seeing your finished product. And if you use a variegated yarn or something different than one, one color, I, I was so tempted to make another that was in variegated yarn and I didn't do it because I didn't have the time, but I may, may end up doing that eventually because I think it would be very interesting and striped also would be gorgeous. So have fun making your Ruana. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, subscribing, commenting, doing as you wish. And until next time guys, bye.